the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. It's so hot, guys. Um, we came down to my little test spot again. I love doing this on Fridays because I missed the Jeep. And I did this last weekend, but I forgot to put this clip in to start the video for the weekend. So that kind of sucked. Hopefully I remember it this week. But I was out testing this new LF audio volt meter, or I mean not volt meter, wireless bass knob. It's working phenomenal. Like, yeah, we you see the we got a little light up there and shit. Um but it's working great. I had to ask Deb, I'm like, does it sound the same? Because um, my RCA voltage was like two volt and I put that in and it dropped significantly. But you know, it runs through a processor now, which makes everything super clean. Well, um, I had to turn the sub level up to get back around that two volt and reset my gains. So I did that yesterday. We came out today and played with it and she said it didn't lose anything. And it made a still, I was turning up to volume 29 and it worked great for like half the day. And then the sub started bottoming a little bit. So I did it today. I turned up to volume 29 with no problems. DJ Rusticles music and uh, Redbeard and DJ Dirty Bass. 29 across the board, it's handling it, which means the signal must be cleaner. But Deb said it was pretty fucking nasty at 29. Right, baby? It was. <laughs> yeah, she said it ain't never been that nasty, so I turned up a click. Hopefully, after I get the work done in here that I got to do, I can go to 29 with no problems. Uh, it should take it a whole lot better then, but, you know, something that, that I thought about, and I'm just going to let y'all know. Um, at the show, when I was turning up the volume 29, it could have been because the subs got really, really hot, and that might have been why... They were loot. They were bottoming a little bit at 29. Is because you know the clothes and everything were super hot, losing efficiency. And then like today, they were cold when we started. Could have been it. I never even thought about it that way until now. That could have been the whole reason. But hopefully, what I got in store for this, it, it can. I might be able to turn it up to 30 without bottoming anything. Just have to stay tuned for a month or so, and we'll find it all out together. I. Going home, we'll start the video tomorrow. So it's Sunday or Saturday morning, my bad. You hear that chicken crowing back there, the rooster? Yeah, yeah, that's how early it is. So I got a battery in here. But this thing ain't wanting to start. It ain't wanting to crank over. I did go in here and set this bitch to AGM. Well, if it does start, we're good. But for whatever reason... She ain't wanting to crank up. So I did put my old battery charger. And what's bad is I got a good battery charger in the house. It's a Shakespeare brand or some shit. And it wouldn't charge that battery. I put it on there overnight. And it's only reading 11 volt. I put this old bitch on here that lays under there year round that I start the mower with. And it's cranking out some voltage. So we're going to see what it does, guys. But hopefully I can get this bitch started. Driving Julian this morning. The battery was bad. I had to go to AutoZone, get another one, and get a coffee. So yeah, we we out in Julian. Don't want to be out in Julian, which it's got AC, so it's kind of nice. I think after I get this Blazer battery in and stuff, um, we're gonna go to Chris Lee's and uh, see what's going on with him. There's supposed to be a couple of my teammates going to Chris's house this morning, so we're probably gonna do that because Deb's out of town. She left early, early this morning because her niece had a baby. Remember, we went to a baby shower a couple weeks ago. So her niece had a baby. She wanted to uh, go visit. I said, cool. I got to get the blazer where it's movable, though, so we can get in it in the morning and go. So I'm going to try to finish that up, get everything loaded in it that needs to be in it, and we'll go to Chris's. Success, guys. I put the battery in, I just hooked it up, hit the key, and it fired right up. So, I did get the voltage meter, or the voltage rate, it said on uh, AGM. I need to put the cover back on it. And I'm pretty much done. 
it's still early, so I don't know what time I'm going to go to Chris's. But it's ready. I, I mean, I got to clean it out and load it up with uh, the steel, get the drill and shit out of here. But, yeah, I heard I'm going to let it run for a minute. So pretty much what I have left in here is going to stay in here. I'm going to take the meter, impact, you know, for some whatever. The screws ain't hurting nothing. Tape is always good to have tape. Uh, the old Alex Plus, I mean, shit, that stuff's been golden to me. It's treating me like family, you know? I did, however, I had to route this edge here this morning. I did the far edge. Uh, as you can see, it's on both sides, but I didn't hit this one. So, you know, the port's gonna come up like here, but any wind back here, I want it to, to roll there. Yeah, you know what the fuck's going on. I don't have to tell you. Y'all ain't stupid. But, shit guys, it's good to go. As long as we get up in the morning and that new battery's still charged, it'll be good to go. Uh, another good thing is being at Dustin's shop, after we get everything done tomorrow, uh, my buddy Nolan's bringing my PVC pipe that I'm gonna use in there. It'll fit down here in the lower and I can put the other three subs that are at Dustin's shop in here. See, God, it's a win-win. But I need to stuff this up in there. Because after Dustin wields the first couple pieces, we're going to uh, put this in so he can weld on both sides of this. So it needs to be bolted in tomorrow. But I'm going to go ahead and load the pipe and shit in here and kind of get this thing ready to rock and roll. So we're getting ready to pull four, change the chamber, put them back, and then pull four chain chamber pullback so we got screws out of a lot of them but yeah it's gonna be some big work over here at chris's today but we got this we got four of these bad boys out chris in there working i can't show you too much i show you chris's head but i can't show you what's so in them what's them chambers so but uh yeah we we got, we got him a fan here so he don't die back there <laughs> Sub loading. I have to get these where the bolts go in. That sub ceiling detail. They gotta they gotta be insulated before you can put them back in. Yeah. Cause they don't have the rubber on the front. So 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 weather stripping here does the job. I guess when you get up in them 180s, you gotta do all this little stuff to keep it. Right. <laughs> it's Sunday morning. We out cruising in uh, the build previously known as Can't Get Right. New name, new name. She gave it a new name because of the new build, which is customary in my book, you know. But uh, we'll, we'll reveal that later. I think she picked out something really cool for it. And the reason we called this build Can't Get Right is that is what I was calling it. Because Deb never would pick a name. So she finally picked a name for the new build. Uh, it did give us some trouble this morning. I tried running it just on one alternator and it wasn't doing anything. So, uh... I had to plug in the other alternator and now it's running fine. So I don't know what's wrong with that. Uh, we'll test it. So we're gonna have to figure that out if both alternators are charging or not. But 
with that one alternator plugged in, this thing just rolled to a stop and died after we left the house. So anyway, I'll be back. I got a new camera to try. Uh, TikTok shop sent me a camera. It's like a GoPro. It's got excellent reviews. So I'm gonna try to record some footage with it and test that out. So if it looks shitty, guys, just remember, I usually film everything with iPhone. So I don't know if this new camera is gonna be better or worse. All right, so I'm filming this with the new camera to see how it does. I can't even tell if I'm like in frame or not, so this is just a test. But anyway, I figured I'd tell y'all something you didn't know. Back in 98, I signed a deal with Bad Boy Records. I was going to be a rapper. My rap name and everything was like picked out. I was going to be Busta Cervix. So uh, it just didn't go nowhere. I mean, I even did all that butt stuff with Diddy. And he just never made my record, so yeah, it was a fail. But anyway, we're gonna get back into Sunday's video. We're here. Paul showed up. Uh, Deb's here, of course, because she drove a blazer. <clears throat> Jerry forgot his damn keys, so we're waiting on Dustin. Um, it's been hot as shit, but right now, like, we got good cloud coverage. And when people be asking, like, Dustin shop, police station back there. <laughs> but it's all good but we just waiting on Dustin to get here so we can get the shit welded in there and uh, yeah we'll be on a roll and Duck is here finally so yeah. Yeah. Duck was right on time too he told me a time on the phone he pretty much rode in like right on motherfucking time yeah and you said 10 30 ish that was before I forgot my keys <laughs> yeah but thank god the overcast hit because it was sunny as fuck we pulled in well, so I was going to ride the bike it's cloudy as shit at that. It's cloudy as shit here now, which is good. It cooled it off. Got the welding shit out. The pipes are uh, already cut. For the front three braces then we'll have to put the port piece in and uh make the bracing for it but at this point shit's going pretty good so i'll be back when the duck actually starts welding tight little fit in there guys but it's all good get them tacked something I normally don't do. I unhooked the battery this time. <laughs> and it's all over at this point. Hey guys, don't be doing that. He's trying to weld. They were opening and closing the damn door, shutting the whole vehicle. And that is how it's done. Water bottle in there because the epoxy caught on fire. Damn, it stinks. I had heard it was really flammable. Well, now we know they weren't. Yeah, now we know that it wasn't bullshit. It is flammable. But yeah, that shit just flared the fuck up. We got a good flame there, and that ain't even on epoxy. <laughs> All right. The duck ain't playing. The duck is not playing. Call number two.
But I've said it before, I say it again, guys. This is why you don't have to make a 10 layer baffle. And even if you did, you'd still need bracing under it. This bracing is gonna keep everything from moving. Imperative, and that's why I like to use steel. It's just stronger. So this little camera is kind of badass because it's on a stick and I got in there to get you all some good angles while I was rolling. <coughs> and like we only say, even though it's air conditioned in here, an enclosure is the hottest place on earth. Ain't that right, Duck? Yes, sir. <laughs> all right, uh, we'll get that port in place and then we can weld our final piece. Yes. So, beautiful people, I done screwed up. I brought this port back to here but we needed that three quarter thickness so the, the port can bolt to this and this. So Jerry about screwed up and duck caught it. But we got our Craig jigged in. What I'm gonna do when I get home, since it's a little gabby gabby, I'm gonna run some uh, masking tape on the bottom and put some wood glue along that. Just, just a precaution guys, uh, to hold it in there better. But now we are getting ready to weld this top piece in we're gonna go ahead and tack the nut to the boat so I never have to worry about that coming loose and uh, yeah while we're welding we might as well get that done and th this bottom piece is gonna be kind of a bitch for duck we already know it but yeah getting that bottom piece still because there's not a lot of room here as long as he can tack it in a couple places or get a decent weld, it don't have to be all the way around. Oh, that would be but awesome. I'm glad I, I mapped it out in my head because it's been a lot easier for Dustin to do like this. This was easier than the very front one was. The front yeah. one was a bit. And see, the reason I, I didn't put this port in already was so he could actually get in here without having to climb through a hole and weld. So that's kind of why I laid everything out the way I did. I wasn't recording. <laughs> I was back here trying to record. wasn't even recording, guys. But this is how we do shit. Really, I'm happy with this idea to do it this way to keep that port from any kind of flex at all. The bottom piece may or may not go in. It's gonna take every bit of duck skill and flexibility if we can get a tube on the bottom side of that. <laughs> yeah, he's already said all of his skill and flexibility will come into play on this. No bullshit, this is as tough a job as any welder could have because he's in two and a quarter inches of space. Two and a quarter guys trying to tack that fucking bottom pipe in. Now, I know there's some of you welders out there like, shit, I've been welding since third grade laying beads. But we do this shit for a hobby, you know. So, yeah, this shit's well, tough. There's definitely some professional welders out there that like to call people. That's for damn yeah. Huh?
You just got to get Duck his props for even attempting this fucking shit. So we got Nolan here. Nolan showing off the guts of one of his latest amps. Me love you long time. Me love you long time. 6K question mark. Yeah, it's safe to say it's going to do more than 6K. Still got Paul here. Nolan. So. Ah. <laughs> we got this in. Yeah. Now, uh. <coughs> this is my bag of uh, clamps. To recone the sub, I put an extra board in here, round it over to uh, have a room, more room to bite to for the port. That's the port. So, you can see, that's the port and that's the top of it. Good round over on both ends. Nice smooth. This will be facing the subwoofers. So we got to epoxy this and this. And then the baffle before I can put it in. So this back side here will have all the Craig jig hose running down it on both sides. And then the bottom here will bolt down here. So we went ahead and made that. And then... uh Dustin had a sheet of wood here, and he's like, let's go ahead and make that port and a couple of layers in the back, and then he's going to come to my house, and he's going to grab a sheet of the wood I have left over and an amp that I got that he needs at home. So we, we got to do a little bartering. Like I said, I can't bolt it in now because I got to do work in here still, but we're just kind of doing base head Sunday shit, getting shit together. And this here is being filmed on the little handheld camera. But. Okay, it's looking great in here. And guys, I hope this works out because I just calculated with this port and that port down there, this thing's going to be tuned in the 16s. So we should have that fucking 20 hertz should be just killer windy. And then we got Zach here. My fucking Zach. Oh, gee. Zach is one of the youngest people I know that does cool shit. Now, you've seen some of Zach's work here before. He's got his build outside. We might go film that. Base Head Sunday be kicking off, guys. <laughs> Base Head Sunday is kicking off. All right, Miss Debbie. What you need? Hold that, hold that line. We got this weird shit. Hold that right there if you will. Yeah. Hold it on that line. And I'm gonna pull this out. Oh. Yeah, I don't even know what the hell is going on over here. We got we got something something interesting going on. Watching Al Sharpton fight, man. <laughs> Watching Al Sharpton fight from back in '87. <laughs> so I got some subs loaded in here. The three that I had left at the shop. I got a piece of my port. I got two of these pieces, but I can't fit both of them. And we're gonna do the work here anyway. So uh, we're just trying to figure out how to fit everything back in here that I got to take home. Cause we got the two backboards here and the port. We did go ahead and route over a good round over on this bottom, and I made the line where the screws to go down here at the bottom. And we will have a good roll right here coming up. So with this only being like a two and a quarter-ish inch wide port, I'm really trying to make sure that um, it ain't going to have no chafing or port noise. 
but yeah, it's gonna be a tight fit getting everything up in here. But anyway, guy, we we still. I, I'm getting excited with it. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting excited. Like, look, it looked really good earlier when we put the uh, the back on it. And Nolan brought me a can of some stuff here called Car Works Refinish Restore for plastic. And, and he brought me a towel. He told me to put this shit on the uh, black trim on Jangalang. And I, we'll try some on this front bumper too. We don't give a shit. Uh, he's saying it's badass. So, And in this trash bag, I have the uh, clamps, you know, the squeezy clamps to do recones with. Cause we've been reconing so many subs up here at Duck Shop that I just left it all here. So, but I'm gonna do that sub at home. <laughs> There's the sixth one that goes in here. Um, yeah, I, I got everything at home to do a recon except for the clamps. I did try my shim that sits on my front computer desk that went to the G2s and that fits the Resilient Sound Platinum. That shim will not fit that coil motor combination because it's such a longer center pole and a longer coil, it will not fit. I did try it. But me and Duck already know four sheets of paper thick. <laughs> four. Yeah. Four sheets of printer paper is what them subwoofers take. So we already know that. But I don't know. We still, we're still hanging out and believe it or not, we got all this shit done by like two o'clock. Like in four hours, we got all this shit done. And the four hours that we were doing it, we were just bullshitting and working slow fucking off. Me and Duck were good together. But all right, I'll be back. Got two layers here. So out of that one full sheet of wood Duck had, we got two back plates and the, the port for the rear. Now, the port needs Craig jigged and epoxied. So hopefully next Saturday, me and Deb can get up in the morning, get everything in here taped off and start doing the epoxy on the port and the baffle. I'm probably gonna have to go buy a roll of some good uh, inch, inch and a half, two inch wide fucking masking tape to do this because we gotta tape everything off. But it's getting closer, guys. Dustin kicked ass today because we literally just came up here to do the welding. And he's like, ah, we, ain't, we can't go out like that. Let's go ahead and knock the majority of this out. So we, we made like leaps and strides um, today. And we still got everybody here hanging out. Like everybody's just looking at me like an idiot I'm talking to the camera. But that's what I do. Yeah, that's what I do. So two good motherfucking layers on here um ports cut <laughs> literally at this point we are ready for epoxy and i got to cut one more back piece but the pieces i cut off the back the baffle i still had three of them at home that are big enough to get one back piece out of so i'm gonna have a good amount of scrap wood left over ducks coming to pick up one full sheet and uh, a uh, amp at some point. So I'll donate that to the bill. He's donating this to the bill, he said. What the fuck? <laughs> but anyway, we're golden, guys. Uh, Is it airtight? <laughs> I'll be back.
Are you out, Nolan? Yeah. All right, man. I appreciate you, brother. See y'all. Y'all take care. All right, hold on, Nolan. We closing down the base head Sunday. And I tell you what, it, it, it was a, an eventful one. We got a lot of shit done. We got uh, just a ton of work done on this. We got some shit figured out. We got uh, new faces here. Like a lot, of, a lot of guys in the videos comments though said you had a nasty fucking build, Paul. Oh yeah. Yeah, you did. Like if you look through the comments of uh, the day we did your door, there was a lot of people talking about your build was nasty. It is. He's got the the, the Honda uh, that I welded the door on, and he said that bitch is holding. Yeah, good. Shitty weld job, but uh, it's holding. So, basically at this point, everybody in this room is on team controlled pressure. So, uh, we are doing shit as a team, which I do like that, that we're getting together and hanging out. So, anyway, that's probably going to conclude this base hit Sunday. Uh, I am on the little camera, so we can judge quality here. We will know whether it's good or bad. Um, and I might not do anything else for an outro on this video. We might just call it here. But everybody, thank Duck and tell Duck that we got to get Bobby Yeager back, which we're working on something right now for Bobby Yeager. So, um, hopefully, hopefully sundown. He knows he's in a bit of a crunch for sundown. So, hopefully. But uh, anyway, that's gonna. I guess that's gonna be all we got for Basehead Sunday. So. I don't know. Leave some comments on what you think about uh, what we've got going here with uh, the... Deb, can I tell them the new name for this build? Yeah, go ahead. The new name for Can't Get Right, since I called it Can't Get Right. She's dirty, but she can get You right. all called it Can't Get Right, and it is dirty as shit, guys. It needs a bath bad. But um, Deb finally picked the name after uh, three or four years. She finally picked the name. And it is now Death Note. That is the name she picked because she loves the anime. So, uh, I dig it. I think it's a great name. What's his name? Ryu? Ryuk. Ryuk? Ryuk. Rook? Whatever. But we're going to get a wrap for the back window of this with the Death Note character. That's one anime I have not watched, guys. But we're going to have him somewhere... In this area, on the wrap, and we got to do like a DS18 logo, like maybe somewhere there, her DAL logo on there, and whatever else she wants to put on it. But that's where we're going to be at in the future here. So we might lose this extra 5 dB that that sexy ass Steve Duncan gives the build, but uh, and we might we might lose my homeboy Matt sticker. But we think about doing a wrap on this bitch. How so, other stickers from them? Yeah, they're easily replaced. Hell, Deb's popular enough. They don't even sell them to her. They just give them to her most of the time. So anyway, guys, with that being said, um, don't, don't forget to use my links in this motherfucking uh, description down here. If you want some LF audio goodies, because that bass knob is the shit. If you're buying from Down for Sound, Big Jeff, wherever, I should have a link for it down there. Peace out and motherfucking bass on. Say bye, duck. Later.